Well, welcome to another video with Inside the Academy. Welcome along. We are going to be using the amazing Sync Fusion libraries to produce beautiful looking charts for our Flutterflow application. It's really, really straightforward with a little bit of low code, a little bit of a walkthrough. You guys will be up and running in no time for your own project. So without further ado, let's get into the video and let's get cracking. Okay, so the team over at Sync Fusion have created uh, some beautiful libraries that you can use with inside your Flutterflow application. Now they have different charts that can be used on different types of technology stacks, but of course we are Flutterflow users, so how do we get these charts running in our particular application? Now they're actually free to use, actually. You can use these in your application. Now, of course, unless you have got you know a huge massive earning potential from your particular application, you're kind of earning over like a million dollars or something like that, then you should be good to use these for free free with inside your particular application. So the, here is their kind of their homepage here. You can see if I just scroll down here, there's lots of detail here about all the different sort of charts that they provide support for. And of course you could use any of these sort of things in your Flutterflow application. So they're kind of animated charts there as well. So I'm gonna walk you through a very, very simple setup. We'll get you up and running where you can then start customizing that by using the documentation on their website. Now, of course, this is a little bit more of a low code video, of course, but hopefully it should be self-explanatory enough for even the non-coders to kind of work out what is going on. So without further ado, let's get into it and let's start now building our application. Okay, so this is the application that we're going to build in this particular video. You can see here I've got a very basic kind of sync fusion chart on screen. I've got the title across the top there, and I've got the y axes that run down the left, and I've got the x axes that run across the bottom here. I'm just kind of representing some mumps, and I've got two different types of chart data that's overlaid on top of each other. I kind of got the dark blue here, which is just showing a value of, say, here 35. If I hover over the light blue one, then I've got some a value that represents 15. So different sets of data overlaid on the top of each other. That's what this particular chart type supports and of course you better to everything you'd be able to learn in this particular video you'll be then be able to take and customize other types of charts and extend maybe this particular one to however you need for your own project so without further ado let's get into it let's start now writing some code and let's build our Flutterflow application so if you're looking to follow along in this particular video, please do check the link in the description and grab yourself the clonable project, which is the starter project. But of course, if you want to use your own project, you can do at this particular point. Everything we do here is perfectly acceptable to run in your own project. So what we're going to do first is we're going to create a custom widget. So on the left hand side, just choose here the custom code option. Move up to the add up the top here, go to widget and we're going to give our widget a name. So I'm going to call this one column chart. Now, of course, you can create many of these depending on the different chart types that you want to use, but you could call this what you like. I'll call it column chart here. Now, what we can see here is if you move over to the right hand side, you kind of got this option here to view the boilerplate code. If you just select that, you'll see here, this is the code that's now going to be kind of created in this particular custom widget. We're, we're good to go with this because we're going to customize this very, very shortly. So just say copy to editor. Uh, that's going to be all loaded. We kind of got the name up here, which reflects the name up here, which is great. We could just quite easily just say save now, and that's kind of all saved. Now, I'm not going to compile it just yet, but you've got that little compile option there. Now, what we now need to do is we now need to kind of get hold of the Sync Fusion library, kind of the dependency for this particular kind of uh, this particular custom widget. And what we want to do first is we want to make sure that that particular library version um, kind of is going to compile OK with this particular version of Flutterflow. Now, obviously, Flutterflow as a product is evolving all the time. It's going to use different types of Flutter versions underneath the cover but not all dependencies that you get, not the latest and greatest are going to work with that particular version of Flutter that's supportive inside Flutterflow itself. If you just move up here, you can see here that this particular version of Flutterflow, which I'm using is 3.13.7, which is the version of Flutterflow is version 4.1, which is on February the 24th. Now, depending when you are watching this, they would have probably upgraded their version of Flutter. So you might be able to then use a more recent version of the Sync Fusion charts library. But I'll show you where the nuances of that is gonna be. So let's move over to pub.dev now. Let's identify the version that we need and we can then bring that into our application. 
Okay, so here we are then on pub.dev. Head over to there right now. Let's type in here uh, sync uh, fusion, something like that. Let's have a look and see what we've got. So we're just going to do a quick search and straight away, the very first one at the top is sync fusion flutter charts. Just select that. And here we are now kind of into the home page of sync fusion flutter charts. Now you can see here, this is the current version running at this moment. So now of course, depending when you're watching this, it's likely to be a later version of course. Um, but this is the version. If I was to just take this now, if I was to hit that little copy, and I was to take that now into my Flutterflow application, I'll probably find that I'll get a compilation error because chances are this particular version is currently being uh, supported with the most recent version of Flutter itself, which we know Flutterflow does kind of take a little while to catch up with the version of Flutter that it uses itself. But I'll show you what will happen if I now copy this. If I now copy this and now go into Flutterflow and try using this, you'll see the kind of error that we get that come up. And this is something you need to be aware of. Okay, so I'm just going to paste then the library dependency over here, add dependency, just paste that in there and then hit the little refresh. Now, what I also need to do is I need to grab one more piece of information because I'm going to need to, uh, to tell my custom widget now that I'm going to want to use that particular package. If I just move now back over to this particular site, if you go up to the example here, just move up here. We can see here, this is the getting started. This is the bit that we kind of need now, the getting started. We need to kind of import this particular package into our, in a, to our custom widget. Just hit the copy there. Let's just go back, just move up here, just below this line here, just paste that in there. Now, once that's in there, you hit the save, and then we just need to press the little option here just to compile again. There we go. So what's going to happen now? It's going to go away. It's going to compile it. It's going to look like we're going to want to use this particular library and it should throw us an error. Let's have a look at what that is and let me show you then how to resolve it. Okay, so there we go then. We've got the kind of the red X up. If I just hit that here, it looks like it's got some really nasty looking particular error there. So this pretty well much tells me straight away that we've got a bit of a, a compatibility problem with that particular library. So how do we get over this particular problem? Well, chances are, as I said before, we're using the wrong version of this library. So I'll show you what I like to do. If I just cancel that, let's move back over to this particular page here. Let's move up to the top. If I just go straight to the top. If we go to versions here, just select versions, you can see here that these are kind of all the different versions that have, have this kind of been released of this particular package. What I like to do is I like to think to myself, okay, roughly whereabouts is Flutterflow positioned in terms of its release of itself in terms of the use of the version of Flutter that it's actually using. So what I like to, I like to go back maybe just a couple of versions. So what I'd like to do is go to something like maybe one of the more sort of less major versions here. So we've got 20, version 22.2. This is the latest version. So I just click that. And then here we are now into a pretty well much a page. Now this chart uh, application obviously is, uh, or library is kind of evolving itself, but chances are five months ago is really not that particular long in terms of features, unless there's a kind of breaking changes and you can kind of have a look in the change log and get an idea of kind of any sort of breaking changes but these are pretty well much kind of bug fixes so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to copy this one now and i'm going to go back over to my flutter application i'm just going to replace this one out here just paste this in here hit the refresh again and i'm going to go back up to save and i'm going to compile it again just click that and say try compiling again away it goes now what should happen is is i should then see a, a sort of like a green tick here to represent that actually i've i've now got a good starting point. I've, I know that that library is compatible with my Flutterflow version. So let's hopefully see if that comes back green. Okay, so there we go. We've got the green tick. Everything is compiled. So from a foundation level, we are now good to go. So what I then like to do is I then like to try to get a very, very basic example of the chart running uh, with inside this particular custom widget before I kind of go full on with extra customization. So let's get the basic version running now. Okay, so here we are then on the Sync Fusion website. Now, bear in mind that Sync Fusion support a number of different types of uh, kind of technology stacks. We're going to be using Flutter, but there's obviously lots of different other ones that you can actually use. So I'm just going to scroll down on their home page. I'm going to move over to then the charts here, and you can see here that the one that I'm interested in here is Flutter. So just choose Flutter as your option. This will then take me to this particular page, the one that we saw briefly earlier on. If I just scroll down here, then there'll be an option here to go to the chart type. So let's just choose a column chart up here. 
and you can see here this has kind of given us a bit of a basic intro to this particular um, kind of chart there's a, a basic code example just here um, we could we could use that if we wanted to in fact um, let's let's do that let's let's use this as an example so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take what I need here we've got a bit of kind of setup here that's going on here's kind of like an area that we're interested in here this is very looks very similar to the code that we've got with inside Flutterflow but the bit this that probably are, that we're most interested in here is this particular area here this 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 body this is our widget this is the one that we're kind of interested in so I'm just gonna select this here I'm just gonna sort of scroll down let's just scroll down a little bit and let's go down to there and just do a copy and let's move back over to Flutterflow itself okay so then a container will have a child like that and if I just now paste in now pretty much the bare essentials a kind of widget there if I just hit the save you'll see here that the kind of the code formats a little bit that kind of is telling me that actually from a syntax perspective that pretty well much shapes up how it needs to be now this particular widget is not going to work right off the bat because it's kind of referencing things like chart data and all this kind of stuff. Now we don't actually have chart data yet. We haven't uh, sort of provided that into our custom widget. We can now go and do that. Let's in the next bit go and create a custom data type and we can sort of load some data up and we can then prepare ourselves to pass that data actually into this particular chart. But let's firstly just have a quick look over at the kind of documentation here, um, certainly on this particular one, because you can see here that this chart data that it's passing in is really just passing in a string here which is an x and a double which is a y so really kind of what this is showing you is that it's going to it's going to have like a, a string which could be your january february your march and your april as you saw on the kind of the final version and then the double um in my case will probably be like, like an integer which will represent a kind of a number from one to 100 or something like that so what we can do now do is we can now create a custom data type ourselves to represent this and then we can then prepare the custom widget to take receipt of that into the actual widget itself to the, or into the chart itself to then display that on the screen. So let's now move back over to Flutterflow. Let's create our, our custom data type that looks something like this. Okay, so within Flutterflow, go move over to the data types section just here. Let's create that brand new data type. Hit the plus. Let's just call this one chart data like that. Hit create. Now let's add some fields in. So the first one they're going to add in is X title, which can represent that kind of the January, February, March, and April. Uh, go to the data type and choose string. Hit create. Add another one in. Now this is going to be Y value one. And the reason why I put a one on there is because uh, is we're going to create a new Y value two two as well which is going to kind of represent the kind of the overlaid chart data so just hit create there and then we'll just do that now y value two like that and that is also going to be an integer and hit create so that's now all set up for us now what we need to then do is move back over to the widget tree we're going to select home page here and we're now going to kind of create that chart data as page state information so move over to the page state option here choose add field and we're going to create one called chart data itself like that this is going to be of type um, data type down here choose it's a list itself so it's going to be a list of values so choose the type and it's going to be chart data and hit confirm now once that is now created we now need to kind of set up our data that we're going to then pass actually into the chart itself so move back over to the home page make sure you've got that selected here choose the actions option bring up the action flow editor and we just hit need to hit here the plus choose add action and then in the first action we're going to do a state update so choose update page state choose add fields and choose the chart data so we've now got a reference to it we're now going to create a kind of one set of data that's going to go into that particular list so choose the select update type choose add to list so we're going to do the first one choose a value to add and we're going to choose chart data so choose chart data that's got a reference to our schema now so what we're now going to say is right okay what do you want to now set choose the field so here's our title so we're going to put January in there first as a as J and choose add field now our first y value is going to be say I don't know say 30 here it might not be quite like the final version and then choose add field and then this is the kind of the overlay data so let's just put in here say 15 like that and hit confirm so that's now our first one in the list we just can copy this here just copy the action hit the plus say paste action and with that selected 
go to the one that's in the list here and we can now update these values here. So I'm just going to do February like that and give this a, maybe a slightly larger value here. So we're just going to say 45 and say this is going to be 30 like that. Hit confirm. Let's just do the same thing as well. Copy action. Let's just paste the action in there and select this one here. Let's now do this for March like that. And uh, this one, let's say, is going to be, say, 65. And then this one is going to be, say, well, I'll just say 45 like that. And then final one, copy the action. Oh, like that, just move out. That's it. Just paste that action in there with it selected. Just do the final one here. But for April, we're going to kind of reduce the values. So let's say this one's going to be, say, uh, maybe 50 like that. And then this one here is going to be then, say, 35 and say confirm. So what we've now got is we've got, we've got uh, kind of four entries that is being added into our chart data. So hit close on that. So now that's all set up. Now we need to configure our custom widget to take receipt of that um, particular piece of data. So let's go and set that up now. OK, so here we are back with the custom widget. Now, on the right hand side, we now need to define the parameters So choose add parameter here. And this one we're going to call chart data like that. Now, the type is going to be then our data type and it's going to be a list of I'm going to take the, the nullable off here. We're always going to be passing in some values to this and choose the type is going to be chart data. Now, once that is set up there, you can see now if I was to hit this option up here and then see kind of the boilerplate information, you can see here that I'm, I'm needing to pass in this and we're needing to pass in this here as well. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to copy this here just like that. Now I'm not going to press this button down here because that will overwrite everything that we've got into the editor. So with that selected, just cancel that. And I'm just going to just select this here and then just, just right click over and then hit save. Now, if that all worked out OK, then we're not going to see any errors or anything like that. But what this is now basically saying is that this particular custom widget can accept in this, this chart data. We've set the kind of reference to it up here. We're going to reference this further down actually into this particular code. So now that's all set, we can now move on and start configuring this particular section here. OK, so firstly, then we've inside this series here, let's sort this particular error out here. So this is kind of um, we have no reference to this underscore chart data. Now, this is going to be looking for a type. So it's this particular type that's coming in here. So all we need to do is just with that selected, copy that. And we just need to kind of replace this out here with that. So just right click in there. And we've now kind of got a reference to our chart data struct there. So we're just going to set the type here as well. We can just do that and we can also do the same thing here as well. And then we can do the same thing just here as well. So that's those errors all now cleared. You can see here now this is asking for our data source. Now this is this doesn't we haven't got a reference to anything called data. But what we do have though is we have our chart data. So what we can do here is we can say well this is this is our, of our widget and then we can do dot and then we can say chart and data like that. So it's going to pull in this from up here and it's going to make it available here as part of our data source. Now on our X value mapper here, so this is kind of the X axes that kind of runs across the bottom and the Y. Well, these are just referencing something called X and Y. So our data is currently our kind of our data type here. So what we can do is we can, we've got a, got a reference now to that. So what we need to do is we need to change this now. If remember, we called it this one X title, if you remember, and this one was called uh, y value one, just like that. So that's just referencing any value that we put with inside our data type of chart data structs, which is kind of what Flutterflow is kind of renamed with uh, put struct on the end. So just bear that one in mind. OK, so the final error we need to sort out is this one here. Now, we don't have a reference to that either. So but it's looking like it's looking for a tooltip behavior. If I just hover over that, you can see it says tooltip behavior. So what I can do is I can just now, in fact, what I'll do is I'll just copy that here and just paste that over. I'll just change the case here to an uppercase T like that. And then I can then open this up. If you just hover over it again, it might give me a little bit more IntelliSense there. Uh, there's no give me tell you no it's not really giving me much more so let's just uh, with the brackets here we can just have a look here and you can see we've got various kind of options that's kind of a uh, sort of available to us here you can see that this one we want to enable it so just choose enable and we're just going to say true like that now that is everything that i think that we need okay so that's now in place i think we can now test this out we just need to hit the save once more hit the compile option just say try and compile in again if you had a, a problem with that but it's looking like it's checking out okay to me within some 
inside the flutter flow ide here let's hopefully see if we can get a green tick if we have we can then take that into test mode Okay, so now our widget is now ready for a sort of prime time test mode. We need to put it actually into our application. So with the home page selected, move over to the kind of the page container column here, hit the plus, and we can move over to the components option here. And you can see here, we've now got this column chart, just select that. And that will be very shortly rendered to the UI. You can see that's looking pretty good already. We looks like we got a, a, a kind of something rendering there. Now with our width, let's just put some width in here of say 320, let's put a height in here, say maybe something like 400 there. And we now need to pass in the actual data itself. You can see down here on the right hand side, we kind of created that kind of that input sort of argument. We now need to set our data. So just with that selected, we go to the page state and here is our chart data that we created previously just with that selected hit confirm and we are good to go let's head over to test mode and let's give this a go okay then here we go then let's see if our charts display there we go all oh, that's looking pretty good we got some charts on the screen you can see we're maxing out here these ones at the top here because we need to set some additional parameters with inside our kind of our custom widget but you can see here that our charts are being rendered all very nicely animated which is great right let's head over to Flutterflow. let's carry on with the customization Okay, so let's firstly just sort out the little bit of customization that we had uh, for the chart because it's kind of maxing out at the top there. So here we can put the max maximum range here to be 100. Now, we all, when the data we're passing in is below 100, so it should look a little bit nicer. And the interval I'm going to set as five. That's going to kind of show kind of lines, it's going to kind of represent increments of five within inside the actual chart itself. So next up, what we want to do is we also want our chart to support a title. We can pass in a title into our particular kind of uh, widget, which we can then then reference down here in code. So at the top here, uh, in fact, what we just do, over the, we're going to add it in as a parameter first. So let's give this a name of, say, chart title like that. And then a string, it's going to be, we're going to keep it as nullable because sometimes we might want to pass in a, uh, a kind of a, a chart title and sometimes we might not. And we can handle that condition with inside our code. We can work that in a second. And then just at the top here, we just now need to pass in a this dot chart title here to represent that title we're going to pass in. And then just down here, we obviously need to also handle that as well. So final, and then we're going to do, it's going to be a string uh, with a question mark here because of course it can be nullable. And then we're just going to put in a chart title just like that. So next up, let's move this down here. Now it's now reference our title. Now again, refer to all the documentation on obviously everything we're doing here, but we have something here called a title and we can then say chart title like that and then open that up here and then just the character turn there. And then we've got a text. Now that is gonna be then our widget. So I'd say widget dot chart title like that. But of course, we would like to handle the null condition there as well. So just by putting that in there just means that if I pass it in, it's going to reference, it's going to use the title. Otherwise, it will then just kind of put an empty kind of string there, which won't show anything with inside the UI. It's just put a little comma after that there. So that is all good. So next up, we can put our extra kind of a column series in as well. And you can see here that this is an array. So everything between here and just here, obviously, is one entry in that particular array. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this now. So I'm just going to copy this down from here to here like that. And then I'm just going to put a little comma in just here. Let's just paste another instance in that in here. I'm just going to change this name to then be a silver. I'm going to change the Y value. Instead of it being a one, it's going to be the two. So we're going to pick up that other value that we've got from our data. And we can also change the, uh, the color if we wanted to. So in fact, it, the little picker isn't coming up here. I've got a little picker here, but I've got no picker there. If I just try maybe just copy and paste that down here again, will my little picker appear? It doesn't. Okay, what I'll do is I'll just hit the save up here and then hopefully I'll let the kind of the flood of flow uh, kind of IDE kind of catch up with itself. So that little kind of uh, color picker will appear. Is it going to appear for me? Let me just try compiling it. Okay, so that's all kind of compiled, but I'm still not seeing my color picker. So let's just pop out of this and let's just go back and let's just see if it then appears for us. See if the it parses it for us. Are we going to see it? No. Okay, let's... Uh, Let's pop some values in here then. So I just want to get a kind of like a darker blue color here with the, with the color itself. So let's do 255 
Um, oh, look, there it is. As I typed it in, I've got that value there. So let's just choose that. We don't really want a pink color. Let's uh, let's go to kind of like the, let's kind of go to the blue here. It's going to create this one. We're going to kind of do like a lighter, like a lighter blue color, maybe something like that, like that. And then this one here, we're just going to drop this down then to be a more darker kind of blue something like that it looks a little bit more purpley that color but that's fine you get the idea of how you can easily customize the colors and of course you could pass these colors in if you wanted to then as additional parameters but um, we'll, we'll keep it as it is for now just hit the save oh there's one other thing we need to do because at the moment if we just try running this now what'll happen is is the the two kind of series will be side by side in the actual chart itself there is another property that we can set within here that will allow us to control that and it's called enable side by side series placement just press enter there and i'm going to turn this off i'm going to say false so that means they're going to be kind of overlaid on one another just like that and you can see the order that you would no doubt put these these series in will be the order that they'll be overlaid with inside the widget inside the actual ui itself so let's just hit save for one final time here let's give it a compile and once that's compiled let's head it up into test mode do a refresh and hopefully we should see oh in fact we don't we won't see everything we need because we haven't set the title of our actual uh, widget so just move over here to the widget tree let's move to the column chart here and i'm just going to put a chart title just down here i'm going to say um just gold and silver if i can spell it 2024 gold and silver 2024 that's good so i'm just going to wait for that kind of custom widget to be compiled and then we can fire up to test mode give it a final go and hopefully everything should work out for us okay perfect there it is there's our animated chart that's looking pretty pretty good now you can see here that i've kind of got the full width here of this particular series but there's some properties that you can set with inside this particular kind of application to kind of narrow those um Again, it's just an extension to the values that you have inside your custom widget. Um, I'll put that in the final kind of version that you can download and have a look at. But um, other than that, that is pretty good. There is a very, very basic implementation of a sync fusion chart with inside Flutterflow. Hopefully you found that particularly useful. Obviously, yes, it's a little bit more low code. You had to get your hands dirty a little bit. But of course, if you can't have any kind of errors with your code or anything like that, then please use things like ChatGPT to kind of help you out and all that kind of stuff. Um, if you certainly are not a natural coder and you understand what is going on. But um, yeah, there we go. Hopefully you found the video useful and please Please do like the video and of course if you are watching on YouTube please do subscribe to the channel as well but of course if you are a member of the No Code Academy it's great to have you here thank you for watching this particular video and if you'd like to become a member of the No Code Academy then please do link the uh, find the link in the description as well so uh, yeah until the next video I'll see you soon